Mission Hope. Inspirational stories of faith and triumph. Life's many upheavals, sharp curves, twists and turns, the challenging circumstances coming right at you, are, non-stop. The inner wars within, are outside your control and feel overwhelming. You feel alone, and, the seemingly endless battles rage on. You feel like you have lost all hope, and faith, questioning. Why me? Why now? How can I handle another blow? The answers you're seeking are in this collection of 20, uplifting stories in this book. Within its golden pages, from the deep confines of their hearts and souls, these extraordinary authors have opened up and are here to assist you in navigating the deep, daunting, and dark waters that you are facing. Each story is unique in its experience, but similar in the fact that through everything presented to them in life, these authors have found the way back to success, peace, and joy through hope and faith. These authors have turned tragedy into tranquility once again. Now, they are here to empower you, to shift from what once was fear and failure into the future of your dreams. They offer as a gift to you the freedom to choose your destiny. Now, it's time to turn the key and walk through the door. Hear from the authors themselves, as they share their journey and story with you, here, on Living the Next Chapter. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the Living the Next Chapter podcast. I have a friend on my screen, which makes me happy because um, this friend of mine was on my podcast a while back, like episode 92. Something like that, Yeah, yes. we're up to 260. Wow, it's wow. amazing. Um, Debbie Griffiths is back with us today. And uh, I really enjoyed having Debbie on the podcast in the past. She is out there in the world sharing a message about her book. Now she's co-written uh, and co-authored a book with other authors in our, for our great friend, Shara Murphy. And Debbie's back to talk about that. And I'll give us an update, too. Debbie, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. Well, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, I am so delighted to be back here and talking with you. Um, so I, let's let's get going. With that All right, one. I love it, and I think I think remind me. I think you coming on living in the next next chapter is one of your early podcasting guesting roles, right? It was my first. So you have the distinct honor of being my first. There you go, first guest ever on here. That's awesome. I really appreciate it. And we had a great conversation. We did, and we both have a mutual contact we have Shar murphy we also have this guy named dominic who keeps hanging around he does. he's an amazing gentleman as well absolutely so, hello to dom hello to Shar. as we record this we're thinking of you today uh debbie for those who haven't met you yet they have to go back to episode 92 but remind everybody where you are right now as uh and you have something going on right now where you live so let us know where you are i do i am in southern california i live in orange county uh, actually native californian and right now we've got Hurricane Hillary that is right now just giving us some rain showers. I hope that's all that happens to us today, but um, that's what's going on outside my world. And in here, I'm happy to talk about my next venture where I collaborated with Shara Murphy on her volume two of Mission Hope. Awesome. So yeah, let's let's talk more about that. Uh, how did you get connected with Char specifically for this? I know you have a relationship with her and a friendship, but how were you kind of brought into the fold to be part of this project? Well, again, it's through our mutual friend, Dominic Damaski, Um, And Char became aware of me through Dom. And she reached out to me and said, hey, I'm looking for some authors. Would you be interested in writing a chapter? And she's actually my second collaboration that, that I've done. And I said, sure, because for me, that's really easy. I only have to worry about one chapter, not a whole book. And there was a story that I did want to talk about uh, and, and go in more, more in depth than what I had briefly mentioned in my first novel. So it was a great opportunity for me to do that. Great. Um, for new authors listening, what is that? Is that a good path maybe for a new author to get their word out there and get their their author hat on to be part of a collaboration like this? I actually think it's a great way to dip your toe into the water, so to speak. It you're only really responsible for a chapter. Um, now that chapter can range from a couple hundred words, you know, maybe a page or two, to you know, maybe three, four thousand words. It depends on the collaborator. 
And it's also a much more economical way to get to get published. And if you are with the right collaborator, uh, they can help guide you into being a best-selling author. So it's a, it's a great path. Great. And uh, working with Char, let's talk about our good friend Char. What's it like working with her as she organizes the book? Tell me a little, give us some behind the scenes of working with her. She's a tremendous joy. She's just a delightful human being. Uh, always asking how you're doing. Um, she just downright cares for you. I mean, we have not physically met. She, I believe, lives in Arkansas, but I feel like I could count on her as being one of my best friends. Just the collaboration, just just the personal collaboration, the personal touches that she's done throughout this whole process since since we met, and um, couldn't be more happier to to have partnered with her. And she's done a great job of bringing the other authors together as a group, where we've gotten to know each other and take part in each other's lives and support each other along the way. So um, I would not have gotten that if it, if Char was not the collaborator. So thank you very much, Char. Yeah. Amazing. She's a, a superhuman. I don't know how she does everything she does, but every time I talk to any author that's worked with her or any author that knows her, they really resonate with what you just said. She's a, she's she a great person. One of the utmost, positive people you will ever, ever meet. So I can't, I what can't did, sing her praises higher than that. Good. So what did Char tell you about the book and about uh, writing for the book? Did she give you any parameters at all about the, what you're going to be submitting? She did. She, you know, obviously it was volume two from her first volume of Mission and Hope. This one is concentrating more on faith and to write a story. She said about 3000 words and that the story, the book would be a collaboration of about 20 authors. So I, it didn't take me long to figure out what I wanted to write about. So that, that was a good thing. That's why it was so easy for me to say yes. So, okay. When we talk about the word faith as a title for the book, uh, what, what comes to mind when you hear that word? For me, it's my relationship with God. Yeah. And he has been there every step of the way through all of the challenges that, that I have faced, faced in my life. And I see how he's he's blessed me and pro always taken care of me, provided for me. And I just it, it, constantly having to work on that relationship and trusting him that he gets me through. Now, that's my struggle. But um, that's what faith is about. It's it's. It's taking that step, not knowing where it's going, but trusting that he's got your back. I guess there's an opposite side to faith as well, is when in our relationships with humans and family and, and that sometimes that faith word gets broken in our journey. Um, what does that mean to you as you kind of look at the other side of faith? It sounds like a brokenness of trust. You know, people... People can disappoint us. Even the ones we love, love deeply, they can disappoint. And again, that's when you kind of have to turn around and give it back to God and say, where, why, why, you know, I'm feeling disappointed. Help me through this. And, and, and he does. And that's part of one of the story, uh, part of my story that I wrote about Charles, in Charles' book. Mm, nice. Because I know going back to your book, all around gaslighting. And when I had you on my podcast again, back in episode 92, you really unpacked gaslighting for me. I didn't understand it the way I did after listening to you and after having you on the show, uh, your background, I can see a little bit of faith being tested and tried and maybe even broken in that relationship you had, as you talked about in your book, mm -hmm. but we have, we put faith in people yes. every day, right? Yes. Yes, um, we do. When we get married, we put faith in that person to be faithful. It's right there in the word, right? Yep. Um, and to care for us and for us to care for them. Going back to your book, can you kind of expand a little bit on your episode with us in the past, how that faith was challenged and broken in your relationship? Well, it entailed my, my marriage. And, you know, I believe that he loved me and would take care of me no matter and protect me, you know, just as our vows promise that we those promises that we made to each other 
but that's not what materialized. And 17 and a half years later, uh, I found myself waking up in a psych ward having attempted suicide as I thought that was my only way out of escaping the, the gaslighting. And and how I was feeling at that time is like I had no sense of self. I did not know who I was. Um, just lost, just broken. I was broken because of a broken relationship. And so I had to really turn around and rebuild. And that's where I found God again and really concentrated more on that relationship and, you know, to raise my kids and rebuild my life. So in those moments where you were at that stage in your relationship and you personally, where was your faith in God at that moment? I still trusted him because... I remember praying. Uh, I took too many pills, in essence. That's what I did. But I remember praying, asking God for forgiveness. Mm. And then, you know, just praying, crying myself to sleep, praying to God. Well. But he, he had other plans for me. Yeah. He had other plans for me. And I believe that he does that. He has a purpose for every one of us. And then there's times because of our free will, we can get off track. But I think he puts sometimes those challenges <laughs> or those obstacles that come in our path are meant for us to get back on the path that he has for us. So that's what I feel what happened, you know, with me, with the marriage, with the gaslighting. Had it not been for that, for the, all of that pain, I would not be fulfilling my, I believe, my purpose now for him. That's a hard road to it travel, is. right? It is. But, you know, every everyone has a, a cross to bear, even Jesus. And he mm. dropped his three times. Yeah. He fell three times with his cross. And it's about picking up that cross and really... I think we're examples to other people how God, if we let God work in us, we can be the examples to other people of how we can carry a cross with grace, with his grace. It's amazing. Okay, so let's unpack a little bit about your chapter without giving it away because we want everyone to buy the book, obviously. Yes. Um, but what, where, where, what was your approach to your chapter did you have it all a big picture of it when you started to write or did it kind of unfold for you as you were writing your chapter? I I had the big picture. I already knew what I wanted to write about. And okay. it entailed uh, one of my children went down the illegal drug route. And the ordeal that I went through in that path and how he turned his life around. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of details in between. So I don't want to give those away. Yeah. I want people to read the book. But I'm here to give hope to other parents who have are maybe going through struggles with their children, you know, with uh, illegal, illegal drugs or prescription drugs or alcohol, whatever the case may be, that that, you know, just keep giving it to God because it's the, you know, the purpose. There's certain things that you can do uh, as a parent and probably should do. Um, but at some point in time, there's only so much you can do and, and you have to give it over to God. And that, at, at that point, I had to do that and it worked out. So, Is it an unnerving experience as a parent to watch your kids take a path that you don't want them to take? It's heartbreaking. When you talk about yeah. disappointment, it is heartbreaking to see your child making choices for them that you know are not good. And... And in that they're destructive and you don't want to see your child end up, you know, dead somewhere. Um, and that was my biggest fear that I had you had for him. And it's so far different from, you know, when your child is born and the nurse puts them in your arms, you have all of this hope and dreams for them. And you and then you see the choices that they make. And, and I understood the choices that why he what was going on that he did that but um still doesn't make it any easier so 
as you saw, as you see your kids struggle in life, I'm speaking from personal experience as well. As you see your kids struggle in life, have you ever had a moment where you've lost faith in yourself as a parent as you see them struggle? Well, yes. Yes. There's, yeah, I think you can always second guess yourself, like right. the what have, could have, should have. Mm-hmm. But you know, at the end of the day, we make the best choices we can at the time we can with either the information that we have and or where we are personally at or in our own lives. Because, right. you know, while you're trying to help your child journey through their life, you know, at least lay the foundation and, and get, get their, to get their wings, you also should be growing and learning as a human, you know, as a human being yourself. So I don't think we should ever stop lo- learning and growing. But it's sometimes as hard as if those those two paths don't align, like my path is not aligning with my child's path. So sometimes that's where I think some disconnect can kind of come in. And maybe that's what causes some, some family dysfunction. I don't know. I'm not expert in that. Mm, right. And I think it's a big struggle for all of us as parents, as humans where we can tend to lose faith in everyone around us and ourself. What do you think is the key to finding our faith once we've lost it? I think start with prayer. Start, start with prayer and then finding the community that will support you. And Going back to the Bible, whether you can hear it now on podcast, you know, Bible in a year, or just pick up the book, start opening up anywhere, somewhere, some, something God always has something to say. And isn't it funny? And, and I've noticed this many times. I can read the same passage over and over again, but each time I hear it differently. And I and it's meant for whatever I'm going through at that particular time, right? So the because, it's it's yeah. a living document, and we're different when we read it yes. because we've lived something different than yes. the last time we read it. Right? Absolutely. Going back to your point about growing as a human, as a parent, as an adult, even when your children are struggling, we need to grow. Yes, so it was right back to that. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. That's, yeah. Uh, um. So as we as we journey in our in our life with faith, uh, it's not easy to find and secure and keep our faith, but it's something that we hear a lot of people talk about. As people read your chapter, do you have a a goal in mind that when somebody finishes your chapter, you want them to kind of feel or experience or know something in particular as they finish your part of this book? Uh, well, two things. Um, tough love works. It can be very, very hard on the parent who has to give that tough love, but it worked. And again, trusting in God, just keep praying and pray, you know, praying, put your faith in the use prayer groups, whatever intervention you can do for someone who is um, abusing substances, uh, even rehab, you know, do whatever you can, as I say, physically can to your limits, but don't be afraid to use the tough love, and, but it, with all times, keeping God in the equation. Don't let God out of the equation. Amazing. Have you had any interaction with any of the other authors in the book at all? Yes, absolutely. As I said earlier, Shar has been really good about creating a group um, so we've gotten to know each other more through a group. Now, I don't know what their particular stories are going to be yet for the book, but uh, some of them, I think, are repeats from Mitch, the, the volume one book and incredible, incredible stories. So, you know, all too often. We all have challenges in life and many times I think and I can speak for myself, I feel like I'm the only one going through it and that nobody else would ever understand. Well, you read these these stories of challenges that people, you know, have have encountered, and yet how they persevere through those challenges, it's incredible. And it, you walk away with hope and feeling like, okay, somebody else went through this, they know what I'm feeling. You know what, they did it, I can do it too. Now let me figure it out. So it it's, it, 
that's really what it, at least for me, that's really what it's about is to share my story and tell people you are not alone in this. Somebody else, I, maybe I'm the one who, who went through all of this. And I'm here to tell you, you can move through this and succeed and be happy. That's that's who you are. And that's what shows up when, when you, you I meet with you or I hear you or I watch your posts on social media. That's who I see on my screen, on my phone. So Thank you. Um, it's exciting to see your growth, Debbie, as well beyond going back to our first interview together mm -hmm. and just seeing where you are and what's happening. Give us an update from your previous episode when you're on, on Living the Next Chapter. We're all about living the next chapter. That's the name of the show, right? Yes. Um, what new chapters are opening for you? What's exciting for you? We have Shar's book. We have other thing, other opportunities. What's coming for you? What are you excited about as your next chapter? Uh, I am excited about life in general. Um, you know, it's funny. I think I recall talking and saying, I don't know that I have another book in me. Well, you know, what's that word? Never say never. So not only have I collaborated with Shar on this, on the Mission Hope to Faith, but I've also collaborated on a 365 daily devotional called Joy 365. And I've also written a, an ebook that did go to bestseller. It's called uh, Open Up. Um, a guide for every woman who has ever been abused, rejected, and isolated to tell her story, find her purpose, and create the life and business of her dreams. So I'm working on creating a signature program called Open Up Now, and you can learn more about it on my website at www.brokenthebolness.com. See, like a pro. Look at that. <laughs> you did the whole thing. That was perfect. I love it. Um, Debbie, let's give um, some advice to to maybe a listener who finds themselves at that crossroads where they've lost faith, maybe they've lost hope, maybe the world has turned against them and they feel all alone. Um, I know that you can resonate with those feelings. I would love to get out of the way and throw the podcast over to you. What would you like to say to that person listening? They've come for the title of the episode, they they, they find themselves in a similar spot that you were in and you've overcome and you're growing and you're changing and you're getting better. And, but I'd love to, for you to speak to them directly. What kind of words of hope do you have? And what kind of words of faith do you have for them listening? Sure. Thank you, Dave. Um, you're right. I was once at the end of my rope. I was broken. And all I know is that God had other plans for me, just like he has plans for you. And when if you feel like the world is spinning out of control, it's dark, there's no hope, um, you don't even really want to get out of bed every day, Just and this, the sun doesn't even look good to you, just muster up that last bit of courage and either pick up the Bible, reach out to somebody, they, you know, maybe you need a smile, just get Maybe you need some help too. There's there are pe people out there that will help. So just take that step, and you will be happy that you did. There's always faith. There's always hope. Don't to be that discouraged. Just take, just reach out, even if it's to um, a pastor, a priest. Maybe it's a, a a mental like NAMI, you know, the National Association of Medical or Mental and institution they have people that can help and talk you through things so so reach out amazing so give us a little sneak peek into the people you're going to be serving um through your course and what you're building um you know this podcast is going to live out there in the world people are going to find this in the future um who is it for and kind of do you give us kind of a your big picture of how it's going to work for people to connect with you and to be a part of that, what's it going to look, it going to look and feel like? Sure. Uh, two, well, one of two ways. I can either help build, uh, have women tell their stories and, you know, together as an anthology. I like to put an anthology together, my you know, myself. And mm. or help other women tell their stories and become published authors themselves and, and kind of create the process. But the more we open up, the more we talk about what happened to, to us, the more we can help other people um, 
And I think Dom says this, you know, our story could be somebody else's survival guide. And that is so, so true. And I can't tell you how many people have started to thank me for opening up and that I've given them that hope and encouragement. And that means the world to me. I really hadn't thought about it as much. I know it took me a while to really open up because of fear uh, and shame. And really, that's the devil talking. And you've got to move move forward because you are a light. So spread your light in the world. And think back to before you wrote your first book and where you are today. None of that would have happened had you not been receptive to actually sit down and write your story. And I think that's one thing for new authors that are wrestling with their story is they're thinking, well, who's going to care about my story? Who's going to, how is my story going to help anyone? It's, it's my story. It doesn't seem that spectacular when I look at everyone else's story. My story seems small, but your story can help someone, right? So absolutely. write the story, share your story, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as like I said, your, your, your story could be somebody else's survival guide. It, it is really easy to think, especially if you go through some kind of trauma and abuse, to really think um, that we're not worthy, that we're not deserving. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, mm -hmm. You are special. You have been made uniquely you by our creator. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you might have had challenges and that's okay. But how you dealt with those challenges and what you learned from those challenges could help somebody else. So don't ever minimal, minimalize what your, what your story is and what you have to say. Nice. Um, Debbie, it is so great to catch up with you again. I'm glad you're safe where you are right now. Yes. And pray everything stays safe for you in the next few days. Thank you. Thank um, you. It is so great to see so great to your see you. smiling face on the ca on my camera. It makes me happy. And I'm excited to see what's next for you. I'm following with great interest, liking, sharing. I'm sending people your way. I'm Thank you. People that I know need you in their life. I'm like, you got to talk to Debbie. So um, it's the exciting part of being a podcaster is I get to make new friends and I get to see them grow and check in with them from time to time. So I'm so happy to see where you're at. Thank you. And I'm excited for you to be part of this book with Shar. Shar uh, hit a home run by having you part of this. So, Shar, um, thank you for making this happen. Dominic Damaski, again, thank you for, for all you do for authors. And uh, Debbie, again, thank you for making time for, for me to come back and visit again. I, I'm really happy to have you back. Oh, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. You're one of my favorite podcasters. So there you go. Oh, come on. <laughs> checks in the mail i love it um debbie thank you so much all we'll right. have links to all of debbie's stuff in the show notes as always and always go back and check out debbie's episode from the past you are gonna hear a person who has grown and her message is the same from the first time we met to today one of the one of my superstars thank you Dave. On the podcast debbie thank you so much appreciate it thanks so much hey just jumping on here at the end thank you so much for checking out this episode Living the Next Chapter, talking about Mission Hope Volume 2. You definitely want to pick up a copy of this book. Head over to OurMissionHope.com. Our, O-U-R, MissionHope.com. All the information in the show notes. Get a copy of this book. Get one for yourself. Get one for your best friend. And let's encourage these authors as they write and share their stories with us. If you want to connect with me... My name is Dave. Livingthenextchapter.com Livingthenextchapter.com I would love to have you reach out through the website. Let me know what you think of this episode. What you think of the podcast. And let's encourage our fellow authors. And let's do something great. Thank you for being here on the podcast. Again, it's the second book from our great friend Char Murphy. Mission Hope inspirational stories of faith and triumph at OurMissionHope.com Thanks for being here. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>